let's have a look at the concept of valency and how we use valency to predict how atoms combine. So first of all, we say that valence, we give this definition of valence as being the number of electrons in the outer shell of an atom. So electrons can move between the shells of atoms. They can also move out of atoms or come into atoms as well. So we'll take the first 10 elements. We've got hydrogen first, it has one electron, and we say that that's in the first shell. Our second example, our helium, which is an unreactive noble gas, has two electrons in the outer shell. Now as we move down to lithium, our third element, it has three electrons in a neutral atom. It has two in the first shell, like helium, but then it has a third electron in the second shell. Beryllium, our fourth element, has two in the first shell, like the lithium, and two in the second shell. Boron, two in the first, three in the second. And carbon, two in the first, four in the second. Nitrogen, two in the first, five in the second. Oxygen, two in the first, six in the second. Fluorine, fluorine two in the first, seven in the second shell. And neon, once again an unreactive noble gas, has two in the first, eight in the second shell. Now, a few things we can take out of this. First of all, if we trace down the far right-hand column in our periodic table, our noble gases, they have the property of being unreactive. They also have the property of all having eight electrons in their outer shell, and we call that the noble gas structure. And other atoms try to get that noble gas structure of having eight electrons, in their outer shell. So what happens here with the other elements then? Well other elements will combine with, or sorry, atoms will combine with each other to try and get this noble gas configuration. And they do so either by losing electrons, so if a lithium loses one electron, it will then have two electrons in a new outer shell, the inner shell. Similarly beryllium could lose two electrons and then only have two, so it would be like helium. If we get to fluorine, fluorine with seven in the outer shell could gain one to have eight in the outer shell. Nitrogen could gain three to have eight in the outer shell. And we can get that for all atoms. But the most important thing is they want to have this noble gas configuration because it's stable. In being stable though, they have an overall positive or negative charge. And we call this tendency to lose or gain electrons valency. So valency is how an atom combines with other atoms by losing, gaining or sharing electrons to form a compound. So if we look at our periodic table, we see that at the far left hand side, hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, etc. all have a tendency to lose one electron when they combine in a chemical compound. So we can say then that all of these elements will have a valency of plus one when they combine with other elements. Our second column, our alkaline earth metals, will all have a tendency to lose two electrons when they form compounds. So we say that their valency is plus two. At the far right hand side, our unreactive noble gases don't lose or gain electrons they don't combine with other atoms, so we say that they have a valency of zero. Our second column in, our um, halogen gases, all have a tendency to gain one extra electron. So they have an overall minus one charge. Or their valency, when they combine with other, co with other elements, is going to be minus one. Our second Sorry, our next column in, starting with oxygen, sulphur, selenium, etc. They will have a tendency to gain two extra electrons. Now they can do this either in a, in a similar way to the halogens. They can either gain an electron directly or they can share an electron to effectively have two extra or one extra electrons. So they will have a valency of minus two. Our next column in, our nitrogens will gain three extra electrons to get that eight in the outer shell, so they will have a valency of minus three. Our boron, aluminium, gallium, indium, thallium, 
will all, all have a tendency to lose three electrons, so they will have a valency of plus three. And our carbon, all want to or, or they all have a tendency to gain four electrons, but they can effectively lose them as well by sharing. So they will have a valency of plus four. So how do we use this valency table to predict the formula for a compound? Let's say we're combining sodium with chlorine. So we've got a metal and a non-metal. If we look up our valency table, we find that sodium at the far left-hand side has a valency of plus one. When it combines in a compound, it loses one electron. Chlorine, on the other hand, at the, at the, in the second last column, the halogens, readily gains an electron. So this gives it an overall charge of minus one. So when sodium and chlorine combine to form sodium chloride, there's a ratio of one from this number here to one for our chlorine. So we say that one atom of chlorine will combine with one atom of, oh sorry, one atom of sodium will combine with one atom of chlorine chemically to form sodium chloride and these charges will cancel out to give us what's called a neutral charge. So the important part is that we have a neutral charge on this particular compound. And we test it by saying what's the overall positive charge? Does that balance out the overall negative charge? And in this case it does. So our formula for sodium chloride is NaCl. Let's have a look at magnesium this time combining with chlorine. Magnesium is in our second column, so it will have a valency of plus 2. Our chlorine on the other hand will be minus 1, like we said up here. So in this case, if we take out these numbers, we get our two down here. So we're going to lose two electrons, but we're only going to gain one electron per chlorine. So we need to cross multiply through our numbers to give us our ratio of how those atoms combine. So one lot of magnesium from the one down here will combine with two lots of chlorine so our final formula will be MgCl2. And we test this by looking at the charges or the valencies to see whether they balance out to give us that neutral charge. So Mg has plus two. We've got two lots of chlorine, so we put two times minus one, which gives us minus two overall, and that balances our plus two. So our formula for magnesium chloride is MgCl2.